Dive locker, Kosca Naval Base Dive Locker, where I used to work. Uh, I'm gonna meet there with uh, the new master diver, not my, not my uh, old master diver, not either of my old master divers. But I've worked with them on another job here uh, when the Fitzgerald collision happened. So yeah, we're gonna check out basically where I came from which is uh, over there. You can see the dive boats after those, uh, they, uh, but yeah, you can see the, the dive boats right after the submarines. You can't see it now because it just shifted, but that's base and that's where I used to work. So let's get on base and uh, meet up with Master Diver Howe See where the fuck I came from. <laughs> middle finger to your face. Middle finger to your face. Now you want some. So here we are. It's kind of a shitty weather. But this is Naval Base Yokosuka. And where I work. It, or used to work is right up the road over there and we're gonna go check it out so this main building over here you see it says ship repair facility is like the overhead to us over at the dive locker and here's the dive locker Right over there. So we are here and what this is actually I'm gonna go meet with Master Diver first as I told him I'd be here at 11 I'm not trying to be that guy so the left half is the diver side and the right side is the EOD tech side there you know they got their tech trucks This is our dive training tank. Which they just repainted the rails and all that. But basically you can, for like specifically Japanese, new Japanese divers, uh, you can conduct training for them because they kind of have like a mud pup phase. This will fill up with water and you can have a safety diver over here or swimming around wherever, but there's ports over there. You can see all inside of it. I might have some clips of that actually, like what it's like diving in there. But uh, yeah, that's my favorite part. Japanese divers made that. Tell me that's not sick. <laughs> that's fucking sick. But uh, yeah, let's head on inside. Welcome to SRF Dive Locker. The detachment here is from Guam, the EOD tech side. Their space is really fucking cool. And we're in.
おおおはようございます Hey, what's up, man? What's going on? Got a little security dog over here. Hi, yo. Hi, yo. So, these are the Japanese divers I was telling you guys about that painted the,、uh, the dive tank outside. How are you? This is Shimpei. What is that? Say something for the people. <laughs> okay, next. <laughs> This is Nishi. He's like the OG master diver here for the Japanese. How are you, Nishi? Good, good. Good, good. This is Yamo. He's like the chief slash senior chief of the, the Japanese side over here. Same with Tosh. He's the OG. You don't want this guy to hit you. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> He's never changing, man. But、uh, back to our video. This is one of the new Japanese divers. I was telling you that they used the train team. This is Kondo. So, what you're looking at here, this is basically our whole tool room, storage room. My old little office space is somewhere over there. I'll show you guys that soon. But these are coffer dams, and these get up to like a thousand pounds. There's a huge one on the roof, I'll show you, that we put on like the carrier. But, uh, Divers will swim that down to the bottom of the ship and install it on the ship so the ship can safely accomplish and do their work inside the ship. It's to prevent water from going in、uh, certain areas. But、uh, yeah, let's go check out where my old office space was. That was also where I used to、uh, work on my car when no one was here. But、uh, this was my little office, my little getaway space at work. I was in charge of the scuba side. And、uh, yeah, we got BCs, you know, standard fins, dive fins, tanks. What else we got over here? That's a tester. All our, all our diving equipment, our safety equipment, ladder, Jacob's ladder, our harnesses that we put on. These things are pretty rigid, and these things have to be certified for us to even wear them because it has to support a diver. I think, it's has, I think it has to support like 500 pounds or something like that. I forgot the safety、uh, net, but there's all our cool little repair gear for our scuba equipment in here. All the goodies. Always got to stay up. Or 150 feet whips、um, for EGS mainly, emergency gas system, emergency gas supply. And then,、uh, damn, I haven't been here in that long. I forgot I opened this door. But、uh, here's where we charge our, hopefully, I don't lock myself out, but this is where we charge our scuba tank. So we fill it up with water to keep the bottles cool because when you're jamming air,、uh, the tanks get hot. And if the tanks get hot, the pressure is going to be higher than when they cool off. So we keep them cool in the water. We turn on the, the hose and it fills with water. But、uh, yeah, and these are our regulators. Regulate the pressure from the banks inside, which I'll show you to here. It's over here. This is what reads what's going to the tank. So、uh, yeah. Let's go inside and check it out. Oh,、well, these are the bikes that the. That they,、uh, the government bikes that they give you、uh, to ride around base. I always felt weird riding those t y p e of bikes. I feel like a fucking a woman. <laughs> But、uh, yeah, let's go inside. All the cool gear in here, man. I only got a new forklift, too. So, this is the main passageway. That's the door we walked in earlier. And here's something one of the chiefs I worked with、uh, made for the locker. Some OGs. There's us on the、uh, McCain recovery. That's my first master diver. I don't know how much the diver Allison is. This is、uh, us on the Fitzgerald after that happened. Oh, there's Master Diver Allison. That's my second Master Diver. 
and now Master Diver Howe is here. But uh, yeah, it's like uh, they put up more pictures, man. Is this again on the fifth job? There's your boy. Ye. It's not hard to see me. <laughs> A bunch of cool stuff, man. A bunch of cool stuff. That's our little hat rack. Walk in, Mark V right there. So this is what I was about to show you guys outside, the uh, dry dock where we, or not where we, but where they work on the ships in the dry versus, that's the ocean right there and it blocks off and turns dry. So this will pull in wet and divers will go underwater to check the blocks that this is sitting on before they release all the water outside of here. So that's another thing we used to do here. There's a the tech side. I wish I uh, knew some techs here so I could uh, show you guys the cool stuff in there. But I don't know the new guys, so I don't want to bother them. This is our little computer room slash hat room. Our, uh, but they turned it into the medic or yeah, medic office which is really nice. So there used to be a bench here and that bench is still there, but there used to be a bench here and the hats were over here, but this is all different now. But yeah, definitely upgraded since I left. Might be able to see some Mark 20 masks. I hope I get to show you guys some KM 37s. must be on the dive boat which we can go check out but let's go to the chamber room and uh, check that out it's our supply locker or storage locker uh, before we go in there so we just came out of there this is the locker room you know standard walk locker room man man this used to be my locker right here still got my mark 5 on there Huh, they ain't taking that off, I bet. But, uh, yeah. That used to be my locker. Got a little, you know, restroom over here. Buzzy, buzzy, blah. But let's get to, like, the cooler side of this room, which is over here. That's where you take the ladies. So we got our laundry over here. And we got our motherfucking hot tub. It's really nice in there, man, after a fucking nice, long, cold dive. This is our diver rewarming system. So, rewarming system. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you get showered off and hop in there. And uh, do the do. Upstairs is our heating room. This is where we dry our equipment off at. So, our wetsuits and booty, dive booties and all. Anything that gets wet you wanna dry off, you can just bring it up here and it'll get dried off. Turn the part off. Now we can head to the chamber room. Boom! So this is our chamber room. This is where the magic happens when diving casualty happens. This is the chamber, it's the RCF 6500, one of the biggest chambers for dive lockers uh, out there right now. These are the lights. This is the monitor to look inside when you're driving. So there's, a, uh, there's two operators here, a guy on comms and logs doing all the comms and logs and the guy's driving the chamber. And this is what it looks like inside. So this is the outer lock. And basically what this is and what it does, it's, it's basically like two chambers in a way. You can shut the door inside there and pressurize that and leave this open. And then when those guys are at depth, you can put two, four guys in here, shut this door, 
pressurize this to the same depth as that one, and then that door will open, they can enter there. You shut that door and release the pressure from in in inside here. And uh, yeah, it's basically like an area where you can exchange uh, divers getting in and out. But inside, we're, we're gonna, they have the same equipment inside. So we're gonna go check out inside. And yes, Master Diver, I will take my shoes off. One thing about being in the uh, chamber is you don't want any dirt, dirt, dirt or, or gasoline or anything combustible in here when they pressurize it because one little spark in this whole facility will blow the fuck up. So this is our comm set. You can turn the speaker on and talk on the speaker outside. Uh, I forget what the canister this is for. I, I, I haven't been diving in such a long time. But you got two beds here for two divers. You got port windows so they can see from outside in case the camera fails, which is right here. Then you have your O2 uh, banks uh, running to the bibs. And these bibs are what you wear. You can dial these in and out to like either free flow, just to adjust how you breathe. If it's breathing too hard, you can dial this knob in and out. But this is what you'll wear in the chamber if you're a diving casualty for quite a while. Got these air muffs in here because it gets pretty fucking loud. The fire, fire system over there, water system over there, which I mean, <laughs> also this little thing is like another version of the outer lock that I was talking about, but way smaller. You can exchange like medical equipment, food, water, you take a shit or something, you can just exchange it all in there and it'll go right to the outside. So that's the uh, chamber. I'll show you guys the uh, outside of this. So here, this is what I was talking about. You can send food and, and all that stuff. But um, yeah, you got this in here, reading the oxygen levels. There's two, one for the inner lock. One for the outer lock. I still know how to set this whole fucking thing up. This reads the depth for the outer lock. This reads the depth for the inner lock. Uh, in case you're like a not so smart diver, they even label it for you. <laughs> These are our travel rates. So when you're compressing the chamber, you have to go, or decompressing the chamber more, more importantly, when you're coming up, uh, you have to follow a certain rate. So one, you don't blow your lungs up and two, yeah, just so you don't get hurt. And we can shut these off. So this is, we actually have to start in the air room. But yeah, I think the hats might actually be in here now, thinking about it. Yeah, here's all the fucking cool shit. These are the Mark 20 masks that we uh, that we wear. They're much more lighter than wearing a KM37. Um, I always wear the black mask. I don't know why. I just liked it, and it fit. It was a little larger too, so it fit better. But here is one of our KM37s. So this right here is a uh, KM37. This is a hard hat. This is actually the helmet I wore, number one helmet I wore on the uh, McCain recovery. Um, you got comms inside, so you can hear uh, what's going on top side. Top side is in the dive boat. So there's literally, your head is dry inside here. And inside there's like a little pad that you can customize to your own fitting. There's also a nose block. It's basically something that this, you push in and out. And when you push in, it basically goes under your nose and you can push your nose on it to clear if you're having clearing issues. Uh, I had to get a custom one because you know, Breckman got the big nose. <laughs> but this is the neck dam. So basically what you'll do is you'll slide this over your neck and then you'll hat yourself. So. I'm going to demonstrate for you guys what that looks like. All right. 
So sometimes you even have a custom neck dam because some guys are fucking swollen, got thick necks. So the neck dam will slide over just like this. Usually you want to make sure the pad is uh, in there correctly before you do this, but this is just a quick little throw on sesh. Actually, I'm not even going to throw it on. I'm just going to put it on. So you'll hat yourself. Like so. But uh, yeah, you guys get the point. Put all this stuff back in here. But uh, yeah, this is our KM37 setup. This is how you send a lot of air inside of there to purge water out in case water starts building and creeping past your neck dam. This is for the EGS, so this runs to an emergency gas tank separate from your, your main air supply from the dive boat or your air bank, wherever you're breathing off of. It's another purge setting. This is the, uh, it basically sets the breathing resistance on here. So you dial it in, it's easier to breathe, dial it out, it's harder. The bubbles come out of this whisker and this whisker. And yeah, man, it's a solid, solid item from Kirby Morgan. But moving on to the uh, chamber room. Let's, let me put this stuff back and then we'll get to it. All right, so to understand this stuff and the stuff in the back, oh, this is our little computer station, our little work area. We won't go in there though. But to understand that stuff, you have to understand this stuff. And basically what this room is, is giant ass fucking scuba bottles. Look how big these fucking banks are. This is bank one, bank two, the compressors that pull air from outside and jam these two tanks. Then we have uh, helium and oxygen, heliox that are sending to the chamber as well. And these are all color coded. It's like this is a color for helium, color from O2. O2 is just straight green. And air is black. So you got bank two over here, bank one over here, and then all of that. You have to learn where every single one of these goes. Like you have to draw this whole schematic out to get qualified to even operate the system. And this is the paranoia, I won't say paranoia, but it's either the kind, not, I wouldn't say even anxiety. It gives me anxiety now, but when I was doing it, it didn't. But that's why you gotta have attention to detail as a diver, because if you turn one valve open or shut when you're not supposed to, at the wrong time, you will kill a guy underwater. He will literally run out of air. But uh, yeah, this is the uh, oxygen bank. You guys kind of get the gist of that. Then this is where you regulate the heliox slash oxygen. So this is the regulator for the oxygen bank, the regulator for the heliox bank. And those are your pressures and those are where it's regulating. Then from there, that runs. All that stuff runs over here. This is the air regulating station. So you got big ass regulators and <laughs> this is so much shit you have to learn, man. All that runs over here to here. Like you see how many knobs and, and valves and, and stuff is going on where it's really important. You have to have attention to detail to be a deep sea diver. 
This is the uh, the ball valve, the gag valve. It's a relief, a relief valve, basically. This is the water tank for fire suppression. <laughs> and then uh, this is part of the FES system. But uh, yeah, that's the uh, the the gist. These are giant doors, actually. So if there's a diving casualty, these doors, it's basically like opening a wall. And I'll show you how big this thing actually is to get a diver into the chamber without any uh, anything in the way. But uh, yeah, now we can go check up out check out upsized. Lars left his Thor hammer. <laughs> that's the tap on the. Uh, to tap on the chamber. Got a little water fill station. But yeah, you got our hats here, your names and all that. Hard hats here, because it's a ship repair facility. And now we are going upstairs. This is something that uh, was made for the divers. Here's an old school diving knife when we used to dive Mark V's. Vintage shit right here. That's how it was secured back in the day. Not these little rubber straps. <laughs> Leather and brass. So over there you got the bathroom. Over here you got the uh, gym. Here. Oh. Why was I almost? This is where we would uh, have our morning meetings, figure out what we're diving on today, over there. See, they have ship, check off tech, red diver, green diver, yellow, all that stuff. And the uh, LPO or chief or whatever would sit up here, turn the TV off, of course, and then this would be the team room. But after the morning meetings, it turns into where we eat our food. <laughs> Got a little, of course, a bunch of fridges, a bunch of people here, coffee machines, and... Uh, this is the best pasta in the world. <laughs> this is the best pasta. <laughs> mm. The best pasta in the world. And then, uh, yeah, you can kind of see it, uh, where a ship would park over there. But, uh, yeah, what's up, man? And then we can go outside and check out where most of the guys sometimes would work out. So this would be our little gym that we have up here. It's kind of like old equipment from the gyms on base, but we really don't care as long as we can get it in, we can get it in. Small little gym. We got a new punching bag, I see. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's pretty simple. And of course, I'm not going to have the best things up here till the roof gets covered. <laughs> and we're growing plants out of a coffer dam. Hey, yo. That's an old coffer dam. But still kept in nice condition. This is something for shaft lambs. This is what you wrap around the shaft of a ship's propeller. Propeller shaft. Um, of course, there's a closing sign for the bottom. But uh, basically, you would purge all the air out of here and this turns into like a dry habitat underwater and the shaft will basically just imagine my arm is the shaft in the middle of this but it's a ship so it's like 50 times that size and then this is sitting over it and then divers are in here working i, I actually might have some footage of that but these are how big the coffer dams can get uh, i don't see big berth though oh there she is so this is our coffer dam stash as well. And got that Yokosuka view. It's a nice little view. This big boy, see how big this is? This is a thousand pound coffer dam. And three divers will take this underwater and drag this under a nuclear warship to install. Um, it was a pretty fucking cool experience to work on those things because it's you can't see shit under there. You have to know everything by... Uh, diver will tell you okay you need to swim 20 feet forward and 30 feet to the right and find this little hole or a big hole uh, to install these on so it's all by 
you got to be a good you got to be good with direction to know how to put these on man those are just the smaller versions of these but that's my only regret with the military is that i didn't film or take pictures enough i i wish i took more pictures and videos and stuff like that i thought it would never end and that i'd be in there forever but uh life changes so that was the piece of advice i gave to the younger sailors and that was my only regret take more pictures but uh now we can go to oh we can check out the uh bunk room actually someone's sleeping in here nope so this is our little bunk room so you come up the stairs there's a gym there's the mill room team room and then you come in here here's the bunk room you can crash in here whenever you want if you're deep sea eod who if, if they like you and then yeah you got bunk beds got no they're not just stripped like that there's sheets to lay on the beds over there but yeah you can sleep in here there used to be a tv in here i don't know what happened these are our couches but uh yeah it's just a super chill vibe and then these are all the techs this is the tech office over there and this is the main room for like chiefs senior chiefs and uh everybody else that cubicle life some uh, memorabilia master diver dog man he was like a made you feel like he was your dad it's a like family man it's another job they did here there's niches oh there it is so this is uh remember nishi from earlier the uh master diver the japanese side he was doing a ship propeller, or he was doing a job on a ship, and the propeller actually cut his air hose. And he somehow made it out from that ship. And he kept this as like memorabilia of the time he almost died. But, uh, yeah, this is where, if you're an LPO or chief and above, this is where you work. This is master diver side. We're not going to get all up in that. But, uh, yeah, man, this is it. This is it. This is my life. This, I won't say what I gave up. But, well, I guess you could say what I gave up to pursue driving. It's a lot that I gave up to, to do this. I'm happy I did it, though. It's a EOD crab and a Mark V walking down. Hello. All right, so I forgot to show you guys one more thing, which is the dive boat. The dive boats, but uh, I figured I'd show you guys this Japanese submarine. I've never dove on a Japanese submarine, but I've dove on some US submarines, and it's a different experience. Um, but it was pretty cool. The inside of these are freaking crammed, though. Let's go. Uh, check out these dive boats there's usually two of them here or more who knows how many but uh yeah i figured i'd film that because yeah most guys don't have access to stuff like this so i thought it'd be pretty cool to show you guys there's another view of the dry dock dry wet what closes it dry wet dry wet <laughs> It's a pretty cool idea they came up with for these. But, uh... These are DSO-2 and DSO-3. Oh, shit. Right. You don't want to fall off in between here. Hopefully I don't drink myself today. But these are our dive boats. And you got... Two of them so you can do two diving operations on, at once but you know here are our benches red green and yellow red is main diver green is second diver yellow is standby diver who can also splash on six thousand three and these are our umbilicals this is for green that's for yellow you can see the tape is all on them this is your air hose this is for your pneumo this is what reads depth let's send air through here and then once i shut it 
the pressure will calculate and show you what depth we're at but if you fuck up as a diver you can actually just plug this with your hand and they can send as much air and it'll maintain the same pressure from the depth that you left to to go down and pick up your tool or some shit and this is our water hose our hot water hose uh, we have a system at the front of the boat I'll show you that sends hot water to us and then this is our comms port it's just capped off with a dummy plug to uh, keep the weather out uh, and this is our hot water heater so if you want to fuck with a diver you can just shut one of those valves and they won't get any hot water gas tank over there you drop that in the water it sucks up all that this blows a lot of smoke out when you start it up but it keeps us warm during winter it's not even winter yet but it's cold like cold days like this but uh let me get grab the key and i'll show you guys inside all right got the key bam we're inside all right so this is where the driver of the boat when we say driver there's usually a schematic of the underneath the ship in here and the driver will be telling the diver you need to go xyz xyz with his comms log set up right here there's a mic here for him so this mic once everything's powered up you can talk to all three divers red green and yellow and you're also controlling their air and this is also how you uh send air to the divers and this is how you read their depth um in case of emergency you have your primary supply and secondary supply in case something happens to the air bank downstairs um this is the boat driver boat driver's little area it's a nice little setup you can talk to port ops over there medical equipment over there some spear diving stuff over here but uh let's head downstairs so you can check out where we eat sleep chill and most importantly breathe from so this is our little kitchen these are the air banks that are sending so there's a primary bank and a secondary bank sending air up to that console i was just talking to you where the divers in control of those guys this is our little eating station there's a heater over there got some gear over here storage room and then you have the uh, main engines back here so there's a whole procedure to start up this whole dive boat little bathroom over here but there's a whole procedure to start up this whole turning this valve blah 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 there's a lot to it but the japanese take care of these boats man as you can see they're still in pristine looking condition after all these years that they've been in operation they still look brand new the japanese take pride in this shit and it shows but uh yeah that's enough about downstairs you can charge your phone and stuff down here too but uh yeah this was my life the deep sea life i wish i could uh show you guys the uh, special warfare side of things because that's what really molded me as a person um but when i'm back over on the west coast i'll stop by we can do some shooting guns and shit and you guys can check out the uh, special warfare side of things but yeah, man. It's nice being on this dive boat. It's nostalgic. A lot of memories on here. At nighttime, these red lights turn on, and it's it's like really a really cool feeling when you're in the middle of no, in, the, in the in the dark, and these red lights are just beaming on you. It's a pretty cool feeling. But uh, got heaters. You want to stand under the heater when it's freezing cold. There should be another one where they took it down. I see one. I don't see the other one. But, uh, yeah, man. This is it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't, oh well. If you did, good on you. But I'm going to head out of here. Y'all take care. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little tour of the uh, SRF dive locker. Enjoyed a little talk about my past and my life where I used to work uh, for anybody who has any questions feel free to reach out 
I got time to answer questions. I think in another video I might show you guys where I started working on base after I gave up this. But uh, yeah man. Actually let's see if I still got six pull-ups in me. You gotta do six pull-ups at least to be a diver. Let's see if I still got it. deep sea and you never goes away just like they say you can't take the hood out of it but yeah you can take the out the hood can't take the deep sea out of us but uh yeah until next time man i'll catch you guys later hope you guys enjoyed this tour peace My life be like